James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, July the 19th, 2014. And we're all here. If you want to count the both of us, we are all here. Oh, all in, man. All in. We're all in. All in the tub. Rub a dub dub. I don't know about a tub, but. We're, we're definitely in the sewer here in the United States today. Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host James P. Madonna and, I'm, and we are coming to you uh, live and recorded from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And let me get the formalities over with and pipe aboard. My illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of uh, Newsletter Censored in 1977 with my authentic bosun's whistle. Yes, I say this every week. I'll pipe on the board now. Arr! Welcome, Welcome the Lord. one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisen Eisenstein. I welcome aboard our uncensored, hard-hitting truth starship, the Starship Censored, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Make it so. Engage. In warp drive, you mean? We're going to the Zeta section. <laughs> The Zeta Reticula. Zeta Reticula? Yeah, where it is said that some aliens come from. Is that so? That's too big. That's the, that's the poop. That's the poop. The scoop. That's the scoop. Yeah. Well, i like to start off by, um, uh, Making a tribute uh, of, I think, yeah. Move it over more. more uh, well, I have to. I got. Yeah, but I, if your hand goes, I have a table here. Yeah, if I talk with my hands, it's going to go flying. It's yeah, so put it's it talking about my tea. And what tea? Uh, what combo? Well, I, I ran out of the antioxidant-rich berry tea. Uh -huh. I have to get more. I just have the. Uh, uh, the tea you gave me, the uh, the black uh, uh, Asian black tea with with uh, fruit flavors, yeah. and I have the uh, Pu Air Chinese black tea in there, and I have uh, some uh, lemon juice. Really? So it, it's it's simple because that's all I had to work with. Simple but good quality tea with okay. the lemon juice. Which brings out the uh, epigallico catechin gallates, which Great. enhances the uh, the uh, polyphenols, the catechins of green tea. I want to tr uh, make a tribute uh, to our um, our new award winner over at one of our Facebook groups, the uh, International Brotherhood of Polyvans. Okay, it's a it's an old school um, fitness group. Um, celebrating and honoring uh, the ancient art of uh, club and mace swinging as well as uh, using the Shenna board in other forms like kettlebell training etc. Uh, old school uh, hardcore exercise and, th and this tribute is uh, called the King of Alternative Fitness and this gentleman made the cover of My Mad Methods magazine and he is truly the king of alternative fitness the one and only from the Netherlands 
my friend, my good friend, Hank Backer. Hank Backer, I salute you as our new king of alternative fitness, and I don't foresee anybody defeating him, because this guy's incredible. He looks like Thor, the god of thunder. Ooh. He looks like a, like a, he's a big, muscle, muscular, naturally muscular, a Viking looking guy. Mm. So I want to salute Hank Becker. We're proud of you. Dedicate the show to you. I also want to um, say hello to and salute Mr. Rick Brown, who is one of the uh, uh, primary instructors of Steel, Stone and Sugar out of Southern California. He does seminars with his uh, two other partners uh, nationwide now, uh, mm -hmm. as well as not just California. Uh, seminars teaching uh, people how to use the mace, Ooh. which is like looks like a big cannonball at the end of a pole. Uh, ancient, uh, uh, of course, weapon during ancient times, as well as exercise tool by traditional Indian wrestlers. And um, he, he teaches you how to properly do it at different mixed martial art clubs, mm -hmm. schools throughout the country. So I want to say hello to Rick Brown. And I also want to say hello to my near dear friend, uh, 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 a very good friend from Osaka, Japan, uh, Miho. Hello, Miho. And um, what else? Okay, now I'll begin. The formalities are over with. Okay. Oh, and, and I'm also going to be meeting with William H. Morrow III, our voiceover artist later on, you know, for, for a very enlightening, invigorating visit. I like that word, invigorating. Okay. Obamacare. Well, doing a lot of research. I mean, I mean, a lot of people, especially, particularly the poor, low-income people, are very happy with their Obamacare because they're they are receiving a lot more health care now than before. But, but, Obamacare does pay less uh, to the physicians and hospitals than the full-fledged uh, uh, health insurance like uh, United Healthcare, Horizon Blue. Blue Cross Blue Shield, you know, there's the Blue Cross Blue Shield Horizon of, let's say, New Jersey, Horizon of New Jersey, and then there is Horizon for all the other people in the country, you know, Horizon of New Jersey is connected to Medicaid, therefore, you have to only go to the physicians that are in network in clinics and hospitals and urgent care centers. They have to be in network because they don't pay as much as, you know, the, uh, the more valuable, uh, more respected Americans, you know, like the middle class and, and the rich. Mm -hmm. They get the, the other, I, I was told by Horizon, you know, they have the other Quote, quote unquote real horizon health care coverage uh -huh. even though my sister who has a very good job uh, and very good health insurance it seems like I have more coverage than she does I mean I mean uh, people out there that have Obamacare possible yeah yeah I mean you know she's telling me different things but anyway but all should have the same coverage huh right I'm getting to ah. that because because Medicaid was, is notorious for paying physicians next to nothing. Therefore, Medicaid didn't make it hard on the physicians and hospitals. They made it hard on the recipients, on the poor, who had the Medicaid card. And, and many physicians, and from what I understand, I, don't, I mean, I, I can't say I blame them, they refuse to take Medicaid, and some Top of the line board certified physicians refuse to accept the horizon of New Jersey Obamacare in the state of New Jersey because it's connected to Medicaid and they're afraid they're not going to get their full rate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
they discriminate against Obamacare because it's connected to Medicaid and uh, the fourth is the system, the politicians on top. Uh, we need a single payer, uh, 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 good health care for all Americans. Should be public. And an education private. should be public. Public. Right. So We own it. We need optimum health care for all. Just like Europe, mm -hmm. Northern Europe, the Scandinavian countries. Tax the damn rich and make those greedy scum pay for it. Just like they do in Europe, the way a country is supposed to be run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I think this table's coming in handy, man. Coming in handy. Okay, hey, I got news for you, for you people. Uh, like uh, the rich are always, and especially the right wing are always saying that we're persecuting and picking on the rich yeah. all the time. Class warfare is very real, and the rich and right wing started it. Okay, without a doubt. But, okay, here's another thought. If government programs are set up to fail, then capitalism is really only for the rich. Because there's no other incentive, there's, 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 there's no positive incentive to to have a capitalist system unless you're wealthy and, and, and they favor you of course because for for middle class and poor people I mean the ones that are not brainwashed and, 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 and brain cell deficient I mean for these people capitalism does nothing positive for them as I told you before we started the show 85 people in the world own more of the wealth Mm -hmm. Then three and a half billion people. Yeah. Now a system which only favors the select few, uh -huh. obviously, is wanting. Right. The, the, the distribution of wealth is extremely unfair and one-sided. Uh, um. And we make it worse because our government some time ago, 30, 40 years ago, decided that all benefits shall be given, siphoned up to the rich mm -hmm. or those who already have. This was a deliberate choice made many moons ago. Yeah, and, uh, and you notice the douchebags uh, in um, Washington, I'm talking about the, the Republican douchebags, the ones that are in the spotlight, every week I read that they're trying uh, some new stunt to get under Obama's skin, they're trying to push a, a bill that's, that's anti-people, except the rich, anti-mainstream, anti-poor, anti everybody who's not like them. If you're not white and wealthy, the Republicans are pretty much uh, against you. And guess who in, votes In for a bad them. way. <laughs> the people that don't have a pot to piss in. That's correct. The stupid brain cell deficient people that don't have a pot to piss in. Um, uh, recently, Sarah Palin, I posted it on the um, Uncensored, hard-hitting troop group. Sarah Palin had another gem coming out of her mouth about the, I think it was about Gaza, you know, and the, the, the conflict. And it, it, it was like people couldn't believe that she said such stupid things every well, week. Well, she wants she said, to impeach Obama. Yeah, but, but her, she doesn't say what for. But her logic is, it, it's. There is no lie. It's like psycho babble. It's 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 of total course. nonsense. It doesn't it doesn't make sense. It's like the ramblings of the woman of a quit lunatic. college. The woman quit her job. The woman quit this, that, and the other thing. And guess what? Fox News listens to her. She she's actually she says crazier things than That's Michelle correct. than Michelle Bachman. And Michelle Bachman is not the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree. That's correct, but either. people voted for her. She's a congressperson. She should know better. 
And she should do better. She's a congresswoman in a traditional blue state yep. of Minnesota. That too. Well, uh, when Wisconsin they speak, too. they should at least make sure that what they're talking about is accurate. It's accurate, but there's no accurate. But there's not, they, they don't do it. It's because they're too freaking lazy. They just say things off the top of their head with, 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 without backing it up. They don't know American history. That's been proven. Well, Michelle Bachman doesn't know her Bible. They don't know the Bible. Oh, yeah, the ones that are supposed to be so Christian. Oh, they everything in red in the Bible Jesus wrote, she said. Yeah, and Sarah Palin says Jesus helped in the writing of the Constitution. <laughs> well, if that's true, how come the, the right wing is, is trying to destroy the Constitution? Except the one about bearing arms and forming a militia. Jesus did not write anything involved with human government. That's for sure. Okay? Because when he comes back, right. according to the Bible, there will be no human government. The aliens will be in charge. Yeah, because a human... No human. Human government was always destined to fail, and, and it did fail. It well, did fail. when he when God kicked them out of the Garden of Eden, he said, go ahead, go have it your way. Because that's the only way you're going to learn. Yeah, I mean, uh, Karl Marx uh, uh, created a system that was supposed to be fair to everyone, and then the Soviets corrupted it and became totalitarianism. And, and, and the same thing, capitalism, well, capitalism was corrupt from day one. <laughs> You know, it's uh, well that a system that benefits only that those who have, because that's capital. You got money, so when you put your money to work, if you don't have money, how can you participate in a capitalist system? You can't, can't. participate. And they don't let you have a push cart and sell things out of the trunk of your car. Well, you got to have a special permit to do that, and then you know they they you can't oh you can't sell your stuff here. Get out of here. The cops will chase you away, you know. And then when the people left the land, of yeah. course, they lost their freedom and their liberty. Their family. They moved to the city. Right. And then they had to have jobs. Yeah, now, they had to have jobs from the private sector because that's the way we set things up. And when you have a job yeah. for the private sector, you work for a guy who is not going to pay you what you're worth because then he won't make any money on you. That's what he says. So he, he has to pay you less then you produce for him. That's the capitalist system. It is flawed yeah. terribly. And somebody and, and only benefits a few. And some teabagger said online, uh, "Well, if you if you shift the tax burden back to the rich, they they are only going to pass it on to their consumers." Anyway, uh, well, I, well, I'm not they doubting own corporations. It. They will, but well, how many of them own corporations? The rich, right? Well, is they it, sit home and make money well, on money. Well, is it better that they pay nothing, like General Electric? Look, everything that that guy just said was proven wrong by history for forty or fifty years. We had the highest tax rates in this country, ninety-four percent, and the rich were quiet. They were very quiet well, they, during we, those years because they, there were regulations back then. That's correct. We're talking about. Uh, Harry Truman, Dwight Eisenhower days. And before that. After FDR. World War II, 40s. Oh, okay. 40s, 50s, 60s, and half of the 70s. And until Reagan changed all that. And then, well, not only Reagan, yeah. what about Mr. Carter? Well, the, the, without regulations, a corporation is like a demon run amok. Ooh, you know yeah. what I mean? You. <laughs> and that's what happened with Mr. Clinton's uh, uh, administration, huh? He signed away Glass-Steagall. Glass-Steagall, uh, welfare as we know it, etc., etc. Gave all the big boys and girls all they needed so, so to all, destroy this country. So all the hardball that welfare caseworkers uh, uh, inflict on the on the poor souls that apply for it, that that kind of all came from uh, Bill Clinton. What? Right. Well, he changed it in 1996. I mean, when they started being hard-ass on people. Well, yeah, well, you have fair. to have a job. 
No, not that Can't part. Can't collect welfare. You have to have a job. The part where you know, little. If you get little crumbs, they call it unreported income, and they take people off of welfare because they, there's a well, crumb here and a crumb a, there, huh? That's been in existence for a long time. Yeah, all that nitpicky. We shit. have always hated the poor. We True. used to put them in their poor houses once upon a time, and we're starting to do it again. We put them in prison too. So that they can be slave labor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Brazil well, wants to take uh, and abandon the soccer stadium and uh, and put little 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 dog houses or whatever they want to call it and stick the homeless in there. It looks like it look like the rafters. They call them fellows. They, they look like pigeon coops. They look like yeah. uh, fellows or whatever. Yeah, like like almost like the way bats live. They hang upside down. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's insane. It's like. <laughs> You know, it's really so sad that human value has been directly tied into monetary possession, to materialism. If you're, if you could be, you could have a PhD, be smart as a whip, and be a hell of a nice guy. Look what happened with Tesla. But once you're broke and you're <coughs> homeless, your worth as a human being disappears. Tesla. How sad is that? Emmanuel Tesla. Emmanuel Lasker, Wilhelm Steinitz. Tesla died poor. On and on and on. He died reasonably poor, except... Reasonably, he was poor. Well, he was able to pay his, his hotel room uh, Up until that time. Yeah. Then other people paid it for him. Yeah, he was poor. He died poor, alone, in a New York City hotel room, and... And, um, and when he was gotten rid of by Mr. Edison, and by the way, I'm going to read a little from and Rockefeller on Edison later on. I mean, Edison sold out to Rockefeller and J.P. Morgan. But when Tesla was kicked out, he went and dug ditches. Why didn't, uh, if the United States government were, they didn't want to back Tesla, why couldn't... Uh, Russia back Tesla and have him move over there. They would have took very good care of Nikola. Because they probably didn't even know about him. Maybe Tesla. You know, maybe people, Tesla was shy. He didn't. He didn't promote himself that, properly. That's correct. Like Mr. Edison did. Mr. Edison was a showman. Yeah. You see, if Tesla had an agent with a pair of of culoons, you know, uh, uh, cojones, uh, to promote him. See, maybe. See, a lot of a lot of brilliant people they're they could but be you're buying into the system that's intro, already in effect they're introverted okay or if nobody knows you exist that's correct i'm but sure russia would have took him with open arms that's the same thing that they, is with our politics or deutschland germany oh my god find a way what about his own country uh uh serbia yeah no, no i think it was he's Croatia. from Ber he's from belgrade Yugoslavia. Yeah, Belgrade is in Serbia. Yugoslavia, right. Yugoslavia. Belgrade. It was broken up. Right. Under Bill Clinton. It, yeah, it was bro it's broken up. Yeah. Herzegovina and, and, and Serbia. Yeah, Cro and Croatia. Croatia and Ella, yeah, that's true. You know, whatever. But, but, the, but point, the point is yeah. that you're buying into the system that's already in effect. And the fact of the matter is the system must be changed. Just like in politics. Take the money out of politics. Yeah. You've got to find a way of bringing the politician before the people without the millions and millions of dollars and being collected from the Coke brothers. And holds his or her feet to the fire all the time. People don't want to get involved. Americans are lazy and stupid too. If the, the ones that vote for Republicans now are totally brain cell deficient. But I'm sh like getting back to Tesla. I'm sure there are many countries that could have welcomed Tesla with open arms. Uh, great uh, United Kingdom, France, Germany, Russia. It goes on and on and on. Uh, a guy like him, it's just that maybe he was introverted and 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 very uh, shy about his his uh, abilities and. He did shows and stuff like that. I mean, you know, the, the, the Niagara thing. This was a big deal and stuff. He, he was well known at the time. But he, but he, he offered mankind much more than Thomas Edison. Well, did. that was his problem. Don't you get it? No. That does not work in a capitalistic system. Uh, forget about the United States. What about the rest of the world taking on Tesla? The rest I know of the, the United world, States is corrupt. 
but the rest of the world also deals with capitalism. It is a worldwide phenomenon. It's not only in the United so States. So somebody would have uh, oppressed Tesla in Europe, you believe? In Europe? I don't know. He never gave it a try. I don't know. I'm just saying that Europe probably didn't even know about him. So, so, How the hell are they going to so get it of course, me? they went with few viewers, they went with Edison because he was willing to sell electricity to you suckers. And Tesla had an invention that would supply uh, abundant electricity to the whole world for free. All right? Uh huh. And that was the problem. That was the problem. It's like the electric car, they took the bugs out of that invention many decades ago. It was perfected. But you see old, a lot of uh, charge stations around? I don't, I don't know of one, except where people live. Yeah. You know, exactly. but the, the vehicle, it's the fossil fuel thing is, we used is, to is heat, here on purpose. We used to heat and work with coal. Then all of a sudden, it was gas and oil. Yeah. Now, that didn't happen by itself. Now, uh, w by the way, uh, going back to what you said about the Industrial Revolution, when Americans left their family-owned farms, to live in the city and work for the man. The man. Back then, there was something positive they had that we don't have today, and that's that Americans depend on Main Street and never on Wall Street. Everything was on Main Street, in walking distance. Everything they need, that one needs, was on Main Street. And, and the businesses that were supported were the local family-owned businesses, uh, granted, you had factories. But then those people weren't making enough money individually in a capitalist system. No. We needed Walmart. Like the plants when when the uh, when the the Teamsters Union first started. When the first union was created, people were terribly abused by their employees. They were shot and killed by their own government, police, and national well, guard. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, the working conditions were horrible. That's correct. Horrible. And they were fighting to improve them. But and they were shot and killed by their own government. Because the, the government sided with the, uh, Corporation. the corporations and they did not care about the people that voted in the politicians. The people are the ones that vote in the politicians and the politician turns around and screws you. And, and we says, still have it today. And says, fuck you, I don't care about you. That's correct. And you see, you see why I get so frustrated about these numbskulls that vote for corporatists, and the corporatists are in the two-party system. But that's all you have running. Because the media won't allow the independence. It's not the media, it's the money. In other words... The money pays the media. In other words, it's very hard for somebody like a Jesse Ventura who wants to, who wants to run on a low-budget campaign if you apply that to the president's presidency, presidential campaign, Whoa. there's a problem, is what you're saying. Of course. Whoa, 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 whoa. How many, how many millions, uh, tens of millions of dollars was the last election? Well, I, I would think that if somebody was good enough to get enough votes to get on the damn ballot. How do you do that? You talk in an idealistic sense when you say that. You have to get these people before the people, somehow, some way. To be known, yeah. To be known, that's right. Their policies have to be known. Because unfortunately, the average American just gets their info from the boob tube, Ooh. prime time TV, and you know, and they, they, they don't, well, look, no wonder they want to um, take, no wonder uh, the fat cats want to censor the internet. They know people are getting real news on the internet. Uh, they know it. Real news maybe and some crappy news. There's a lot of fake stuff on <laughs> the internet. It's like it's like people who create viruses and Trojans, like these people have nothing better to do no. than to go to Photoshop and make something fake saying that this one said this and that one said that. You know, quotes made by Abe Lincoln, Mark Twain, whatever, that are, that are lies, fake photos. And when you give a, uh, what the hell do you, what the hell do you call it when you, you uh, praise some kind of uh, 
like for the vitamin shop, they want you to uh, praise some kind of product. Oh, a testimonial? Testimonial, testimonial yeah. evidence. Yeah. So a lot of people are paid for those testimonials. They never even use the product, Listen, et cetera. Et cetera. Never, ever, I'm glad Dr. Bill brought it up, never, ever read an article about a food or a supplement yeah. that has um, a formula being sold at the bottom of the article. If you see, like, if you scroll to the bottom and they're trying to sell their product and and that's connected to a testimonial uh, and or, or an article about it, don't, don't believe that article. You want to read articles that are not connected to any, any company, independent articles. Right. right. Just like studies. They like, must like, be independent. Like oh, the sugar industry pays for a study. Oh, uh, that sugar is good. Bingo! Of course they're going to say sugar is good. That's how they make their fortune. Uh, the toxic American food industry. Uh, it could be any vitamin or herb or anything. If they're selling it, they're going to doctor up and monkey with the information. Uh, people, uh, organizations like um, Live Strong, uh, Natural News, these are good sources for your health information. But anyway, before we begin, before we sink our teeth into these readings, I just want to tell everyone, there never was, there, there is not today, and most likely never will be in the capitalist system of the United States, trickle-down economics. It's a lie. What, what you have is siphon up to the top 20% economics. Siphon up to the fat cats economics. This is a siphon, by the way. Siphon up. Never any trickling down. Okay, siphon, I'll put you away. Now let's sink our piranha teeth into these readings. I know we, we did a lot. We were very long-winded today. I, 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 that wasn't my intention, but it ends up being that way. Ah, not bad. We've got a half hour before lunch. When I was a child, I was taught that any problem that can be solved with a checkbook isn't a real problem. Apparently, the major banks responsible for the 2008 financial crisis learned this same lesson. Citigroup has just been fined $7 billion for its role in the meltdown. That amount is roughly half of its last year's profits. It is good that some of that money will end up in the pockets of some whose lives were ruined by the actions of these banks, including Citibank. Excuse me, Citigroup. The problem is that these banks accept these penalties as simply the cost of doing business. Although describing it more accurately would be the cost of committing unconscionable financial crimes. Corporations are people too! has a familiar ring to it. Yeah, sure. That was Mr. Mitt Romney. How could they be people? Corporations are people too, my friend. How could they be people if they're not people? A corporation is a structure. A state structure for doing business. In the public interest. It's or a, its charter yeah, it's a, can be revoked. Yeah, it's a profit-making organization, uh, uh, for, for profit. But it must work in the public interest. I don't yes. care whose profit is involved, shareholders or whatever. It if it ain't working in the public interest, its charter yeah. can be revoked. Yeah, if it's hurting the country, if it's not working like Bill said, public interest. However, it wasn't a corporation that committed these crimes, it was people. Corporations cannot be sent to jail. 
people who are employed by corporations can, but they aren't. Yeah, I know why. They pay off the politicians. Fining Citigroup is all well and certainly good, but it does not provide adequate reason for such banks to deal honestly with their customers. It provides no incentive to do business openly and with integrity. Uh. It is simply the cost of doing criminal business. Monkey business. I believe that if the major office holders of such banks were faced with real prison sentences, their behavior would change. Yeah, the, 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 you utilize the punishment fitting the crime, you carry it out. And change quickly. Yeah. If just one of these officers were sent to prison, it would send a shockwave of reform through the entire industry. It would create an environment in which solving the problem would no longer be simply writing a tax deductible check. Okay? Simply a cost of doing business. That's all it is. Is there any so, wonder that they continue doing it? Every now and then the financial industry sector brings us down and robs the taxpayer and yeah. we continue. And a fine is just a, a tiny little microscopic slap on the wrist. But if you revoke their charters, revoke their charters. And then set up the corporation as a co-op. That the employees are in charge. That's, Ain't that wonderful? That sounds like a positive company. Yeah. That sounds like, like, like good capitalism. That's not capitalism anymore. That's communism. That's what they'll call it. That's no. socialism, my friend. They call, didn't they call Obamacare socialism? That's correct. Heaven forbid that the poor will be able to go to a doctor. I think the vote or now, a dentist. I huh? think the vote now in the House is fifty times they tried to get rid of Obamacare. So uh, they got nothing else to do so, in the House so what, of Representatives. Yeah, and they're still giving away uh, a fortune to uh, corporations and welfare, corporate welfare subsidies. They're still, they still want to give money to the rich. No, welfare no, queens? No VA hospital help. No food stamps for veterans. Dude, oh, no. Dude. The VA hospital is, is still in shambles. Well, oh, no. None of that. None of that stuff. They, but, but, but they... Of course, they sign yes to more billions or trillions or whatever to be given away for free to corporations. And of course, let's let's spend another four to six trillion dollars in Iraq. Let's go back in there. You know what this former um, um, U.S. soldier that um, was in Iraq said? Uh, if you want to go back to Iraq, he'll go, but he wants. Uh, he wants Rush Limbaugh, all the Fox people, and the, and the Republicans in Congress with him on the battlefield. Idealism. Well, you know, he was being very sarcastic. I know. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, nobody, nobody... But the people in Fox don't listen to that crap. Okay? Dick Cheney had what? Five deferments? He didn't go. No, but he'll make money off of other people's children going. That's correct. That's what Halliburton did. You know. Hey, it cost a hundred dollars to wash a duffel bag of clothes for the army. Guess who was instrumental in bringing about the privatization of the military? Mr. Dick Cheney. Way back when. And the okay. U.S. media just goes along with you it. You know, there's no KP anymore in the military. No. No. Halliburton, KBR, they supply the food. 
So the Republicans want to privatize absolutely every, everything. everything and every part of your life. That's true. Every part of your life. Interesting. Well, I don't. I don't know where uh, the Republicans uh, expect the poor to go if there's no Obamacare. They, when they don't get sick. expect them to go anywhere. And when they get sick. Stop making it as if they care about that. They don't care about it. Number one, they have no oxytocin. I tell you how many times. Yeah, but you're letting them off easy. By no compassion. That. You're you're letting them off easy. You're 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 making it a a, a medical syndrome, a medical situation. Which it is. They're evil. They're evil. Forget about oxytocin. But that's not the. How do you gonna? How do you? Sociopaths. Medicate evil. Sociopaths. You get rid of what them. What if we? What if we continue? Get rid of them thinking like conservatives do about such things as alcoholism and drug. What if they not are not a medical problem? Why don't we, you know, if we keep looking at them as evil. How do we solve that? They are, they are more sociopathic and wicked, in my opinion. I, I, I just think it's, it's going easy on them saying, oh, the poor deers are, are lacking in oxytocin. You know, we have to... That's not being easy on them. That's explaining what's going on. Now, there's a. How do you deal with sociopathic politicians? Well, first of all, don't elect them to begin with. You can't tell that. They lie at the beginning. What do you think? And Michelle Bachman told what she wants to do when she's in a rep House of Representatives? And, and the fools believe it. Because they use. Republicans use this hype when they campaign. God, Small government, no God, taxes. God, and the the patriot patriotic mumbo jumbo, the flag waving mumbo jumbo. Yeah, that's what they use when they when they campaign. Exactly. They and they, the and they stir party. the people up. All those people out there in the Bible Belt states and the red states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They God, we got to bring God back. Yeah, those dogs. Yeah. And, they, and they like to blame. Oh yes, it's those illegal immigrants. It's their fault. It's the people crossing the border. Oh, the gays, yeah, it's their fault too. They, they, they get them all riled up. And that's how these these stupid rednecks go out and vote Republican. Uh -huh. That's why you have Mitch McConnell in there. And and uh, I don't know what the deal is with the, the Paul Ryan, because like I said before, those are blue states. You got Scott Walker in, in, in Wisconsin, and you got Paul Ryan, and you got Bachman in... Uh, uh, in Minnesota. Minnesota, these are supposed to be blue states. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. New Jersey is supposed to be a blue state, uh -huh. and they reelected the the, the 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 fat obese demon, Chris Christie. Uh -huh. It's it's See? a real. It's, so the problem is you can't tell that they are ill before they get in. You cannot. You can't tell by a person's words. You have to, as the Bible says, you know them by their fruits. Of course, yeah. Okay. But they could look at you and lie to you. It, they do. And don't flinch. If you look at uh, 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 Fox News every day, you'll see it in action. Yeah. Usually, they, usually they look a, right at the camera. Usually, a liar with a conscience is can't make eye contact with you when they lie. But these are these sociopathic types of people. They have no conscience. Don't have that. Yeah, and they great. could make eye contact with you. That's great. You know. Uh, and today, you know, women always blame men as being scoundrels and liars. Yeah. Well, guess what? Believe me, women lie too nowadays, just as much as men. It's a, well, it's a whole lying world. It's, for a, kind of, it's, a it's human, the devil's world. It's a human nature. Yeah, it's the devil's world. Well, Satan's you know, world. Why you know. would you expect anything better? You know? Yep. There is no doubt that Thomas Edison was a genius. In the public's mind, he is one of the world's most celebrated inventors. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> However, there are maybe only a few people who know about his other side. Yeah, well, the history books don't tell us his other side. In the article, several of Edison's films are mentioned. One of the films missing shows the actual electrocution 
of Topsy. Topsy. A Coney Island circus elephant that was condemned to death in 1903. Why, her trainer was abusive and she killed him? Electrical experiments! Experimental? Just took Topsy and says, well, let's use Topsy to test it out. Just like that. Edison's tortuous experiments on animals were widespread. I'm glad you're reading this. He would reportedly ask neighborhood children to collect stray dogs. Now I know and why. And Edison would pay 25 cents per animal. Now I know why he sold out to uh, J.P. Morgan and, and Rockefeller. It, it, it coincides with his real personality. Experiments often took place late at night. But in 1888, a public demonstration was scheduled in which a dog was given successive volts of direct current. It suffered greatly, but survived. Then, the same dog was given 500 volts of alternating current, and after moaning and convulsing, it died. All in the name of profit, of corporatism. The point is that this part of Edison's history is completely left out. I do not remember ever learning of these experiments as a child in school. Yeah, and, and guess who pays for those school textbooks? It's taxpayers' money. And they're and, and, and Yeah, and, but they have to pass muster in Texas. And they're lie, they're lies. Pass muster in yeah, Texas? That's correct. Screw Texas. Well, it's nice to say, but the, how do you do that? Pass muster. It's always nice to say when someone's in charge or this, that, and the other thing. Oh, I want to do away with that. But, but, but how do you do that when they have garnered so much power? So, so, the, so the, the history books I read glorified Thomas Edison and the stupid teachers went along with it, and. Uh, and glorified the founding fathers who kept slaves by the way and so on and so on and left out lots of information about uh, the cruel mistreatment and genocide of Native Americans by the colonists and the US Army back then yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the whole slavery uh, issue back then yeah uh, the, yeah the Native Americans the poor the poor souls hey during Thanksgiving they, they, they glorified the pilgrims who uh, landed, uh, the Puritans, who landed at, at uh, Plymouth Rock or wherever the hell they landed. Yeah. You know, I mean, they didn't mention, uh, they, had, they showed pictures in, 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 the, in the textbook of the Indians and the, with, the, with the Puritans sitting down to a meal, like, all friendly and everything. They didn't mention about how the uh, Native Americans got the, the biggest screw job ever. They didn't mention that. Oh, but they sure like to tell you about the Holocaust in Germany. They, oh, they tell you about that, but we didn't know about the uh, genocide of Native Americans, how they gave blankets with smallpox uh, uh, in it as gifts to Native Americans, how they the army tried to exterminate all the buffalo. Mm -hmm. to, so there'd be nothing to eat. For the plane, for the planes, and you keep asking the question. Planes and these. Well, what do the conservatives want to do with the poor? What do you think they want to do with them? The point is, chemtrails. Something to think about. Also, no, 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 no. Chemtrails affect everybody. That is, even the people who are making them. Well, they're, they, they. So showed, that would be stupid, wouldn't it? They showed an aerial photo of chemtrails over uh, New York. I don't know, Brooklyn or Bronx and everything. They showed how excessive it was. Yeah, but what is it? It's, it's that's the point. It, it, there's a lot of theories. It's not some kind of a poison or something like that being distributed on the people, because it would be distributed on them. 
So they're not gonna do something like that. So what you're saying is some conspiracy theorists are nuts. Some of them are. Because they're saying it's chemtrails are deliberate for... It's not that the government does not do mass uh, experiments like that. Genocide. Because they did in the light bulbs in the, uh, uh, in the subways in New York City. They put germs in there so that they would track them how they were blowed. How they were blowed around the subway. And of course our CIA and everything with spies and stuff with the drugs and all that stuff. They did all kinds of experiments like hallucinogens and, you know, LSD and all that. Yeah, yeah, they do that stuff. But that's selective. A chemtrail is not selective. Everybody, it's going to go on to the Rothschilds, too. Everybody's going to get affected by chemtrails. Yeah. Even the rich. Yeah. So they wouldn't do that. Okay. Well, you use some logic. The point is that this part of Edison's history is completely left out. I do not remember ever learning of these experiments in, in chi, as a child in school. Nor did anyone discuss this topic at his laboratory when I took a tour there several years ago. If you are going to celebrate the history of this man, tell the whole history. And that goes for everyone who is in a history book and people that should be in history books that are not. Well, they certainly haven't done that with uh, Wilhelm Reich, have they? I, have, I never heard of Wilhelm Reich until you told me about him. Uh -huh. By the way, if anybody wants to learn a little about him, the new issue of Censored, uh, uh, How to Defeat a Conservative, is dealing with uh, Wilhelm Reich and his fight with the FDA. Back in the 50s. Which is a uh, prime example of uh, how, um, how Correct. Some, something that is right and something that is good for humanity gets uh, 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 censored by uh, the powers that be, which happen to be wicked, in that, but it happens to be the powers that be that run the United States. <laughs> Government... Um, Agencies. I mean, you know, when I mentioned government programs before, I was talking about like social programs that are meant to help the poor. But if, if since they don't really end up helping the poor, that's correct. Then what other incentive is there to be in a capitalist country that it, where it's only for the rich? It's only helping the rich. You know, there's there's no incentive for the average person to to embrace capitalism unless you're filthy rich, uh, selfish, greedy, you know, person. <clears throat> then you would love it, and, and you would, you would it. and you would you would co-opt it with the flag and the Bible. You wrap it, yeah, mom. Apple pie like a and Chevrolet. Like a burrito. No, they don't drive Chevys. Well, like, they did. Like a burrito. Yeah, they got. They're holding the Bible and the, they're wrapped in the in the American flag, and and but they're hiding their real agenda. But they're not hiding it anymore because it's very obvious what they want. It's very obvious what they want. But those numbskulls out there in the red states, they just can't see it. That's why they live in red states. Uh, they see it. But how come we see it and, and we, they see and it we too, understand it? But they, they have it from a different perspective. I'm, I have in mind the militias. They see it, but they blame the wrong thing. Because they're listening to the wrong people. They blame, for instance, the problems. They blame government as an entity. But government is us. Well, that's all collectively together. It's called a democracy. That's what, unfortunately, that's what the libertarians do all, all the time. They're always blaming government. Big uh, government. Government this, big government, government that. Yeah. I never, I never heard a libertarian, aside from Jesse Ventura, mention corporations. Bash corporations. Alex Jones is always, government is bad. Government, government. Our freedom is taken away by government. But 
You don't but hear remember, you don't hear Alex Jones uh, no, but talking remember, about when any whenever these people corporate CEOs yeah. that you're talking about <clears throat> say smaller government, smaller government, what they mean in their heart of hearts is if the government is small enough, it cannot bother us. That is the rich and corporations. Then, then that's what they really want. And then it'll be open season oh. on everybody, and and they will be allowed. The to, Hunger Games. They they will be allowed to do anything they want. And that's what they're after. That's e what that e means when they say smaller together. I am, I am almost positive that corporate American CEOs would love it for people to work wearing diapers and not get breaks or vacations or... They had that at one time. They have it in China, I think. They had that in America at one time. This brought about our modern day. You know, uh, 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 eight hours of work a day, etc. Well, my, my friend Miho, in working for a company in Japan, sometimes she has to put in uh, six, seven days a week and work terribly long hours every day. Capitalism is alive and well in Japan and too. She, and she, she's lucky, she's lucky if she gets to have a, a bowl of a, a noodle soup for her dinner. Ramen noodles? Whatever, dumplings, noodles, whatever it is, it's it's a very light meal. Of course. I could never survive on it. Of course. Okay, but, but there's no, there's no, there's not, there's no time because, you know, she's always working. Uh, 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 are they dis distraught about it? Are they sad, unhappy about it? Uh, yes, of course they're unhappy about it. That's why God is unhappy about it in the Bible. That's why in the millennium, when Jesus comes back to rule, yeah. every man shall have his own land and his own vine. Yes, and also okay. the Bible said life begins when the first breath is taken as in Adam. You well, the stupid, Bible doesn't say that. Stupid evangelical... What? It doesn't say that. You deduce that. In other words... From what happened there. In other words, the Bible does not really tell you point blank when life begins. It, it shows you an example. An example? Yeah. Okay, okay. Now but, you, right. as Sherlock Holmes did, you deduce. Right. See? But as far as the but you know that's another problem with conservatives they can't deduce. But as far as the religious nuts insisting that that uh, you're murdering sperm if you jerk off or or you or a fertilized egg is a person, they have no nothing to back that up the either. The Bible is silent on abortion. There's nothing said about silent. it. Silent. They and used to use the example of Onan way back when. Oh man. And then yeah. they changed today. They got other crap. But Onan, his brother, died. So in ancient Israel, if the brother dies, you take on the responsibility of his wife. Yeah. So Onan, he, uh, when, he, when he banged his brother's wife for the first time, he pulls out. And his semen goes on the ground. Yeah. Coitus interruptus. Yeah. And that's what they used to use as, oh, see, that's abortion, or God doesn't like abortion. It's not abortion. Coitus interruptus is not it's abortion. It's not abortion because it's not a human life. Yeah. It's contraception. <laughs> hey, when God used to get of pissed when God used to get pissed off and he used to smite villages and I shall smite you! Everybody got smited. Men, women, children, babies, right? Well, in Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot begged God not to destroy the cities. And God said, okay, find me, a, I don't know what the number was at first, but it got down to, all right, you find me ten decent people, mm -hmm. and I won't destroy the cities. Mm -hmm. Well, Lot couldn't find ten decent people there, so... The cities got destroyed. Oh, wow. And while Lot and his family or whatever were running away from the cities, because God said, get, go get going because I'm going to destroy And don't look back. That's what he told the, them, don't look back. The wife 
of Lot looks back and turns to a pillar of salt. Now, I don't know if she was pink Himalayan salt or what, but salt, nonetheless. Yeah, that's what I use. <laughs> Load, loaded with minerals. I think it was an ancient seabed under the Himalayas. Anyway, are you done with that? I'm done with that. Or I, I'm okay, sure. listen. People, people. Pistols. This is, where the hell is my chalet? Oh, here it is. There it is. I'm, I'm, I kind of move things around. It is now time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. And uh, I will now, after I, after I finish what I have to do in the men's room, I, uh -huh. will, I will join uh, with uh, our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III. Right? And then followed by our promo done by William H. Morrow also. Oh. We'll catch you. What the fuck? The sleigh move. Oh my god. We'll catch you on the way back. Okay, we're here with William H. Morrow the third. Stop laughing. H how are you, sir, today? Likewise, same as always. I haven't won the lottery from there, okay? I haven't won the Powerball lottery yet. Come close. If I got one number, I think I'd throw a party. But anyway, continue. Well, don't, don't do what a lot of people do. Don't piss it away. Piss what? I haven't won anything. No, your, your fortune. My fortune? Oh, <laughs> I can't. I can't. That was stolen from me. Anyway, continue. <laughs> okay, uh, now we were talking about IBM uh, two weeks ago, and uh, I was very happy to see that IBM came out with a revolutionary new solar panel that totally blows away all of the uh, solar panels commonly used today. It attracts more uh, radiation from the sun, produces more electricity, and before that, I was, I, I was, I haven't really heard anything from IBM in many years. You've got to realize, you're me growing up as an IBM brand as I was. IBM does so much behind the scenes and secretive. Mm -hmm. They do a lot for the governments <laughs> behind the scenes. A lot of what they what they do is very secretive. So you're not going to hear a lot of it. So even though they're not in, in the spotlight in terms of the spotlight means nothing. Jimmy, PCs. There, Jimmy, there are so many companies out there you probably and I probably like Hewlett Packard. We've never no. heard of. They're doing things for the government, so what have you around right. the world. We just don't right. know. You can't imagine what is really going on out there. Just because because you hear of a company, there are other companies out there too. Just it so. just so happens that they chose not to make the PC and the, or the laptop their number one source of business. Well, which was odd to me because they were the number one laptop. Yeah. They made Lenovo, didn't they? No, no. Lenovo was a Chinese company okay. that bought the ThinkPad from IBM. The IBM ThinkPad was about the best laptop ever. But IBM, I guess, didn't market it correctly. Their timing wasn't right. It just didn't click for them. But it was the best. Yeah. And you paid a lot more, but you got a lot more. But Lenovo is a Chinese company that bought, bought the ThinkPad or whatever the plans yeah. or whatever from IBM. Yes. Yeah. It's Lenovo now. Now, now of course, you have the, the tablet, which most likely will replace the laptop uh, someday. Was well, it a touchscreen? The touchscreen. I don't know if I like that. A lot of people are old school, like myself. I like a, I like a keyboard. A keyboard. Well, I me like too. A keyboard. Yeah, me too. I like the touch, the feel, the sound. I don't want everything to be a little icon that I, I touch. That's yeah, and if you don't touch it right, it doesn't respond. And they can malfunction quite often. So, uh, yeah. Uh, now, now with solar energy, this means that a smaller device would produce the same electricity as a huge area of standard solar panels. Well, what you're saying is IBM has made, found a way to make massive, more massive storage in a much smaller space. Exactly. You don't need these big solar energy acreages, acreages. of fields, field, so to speak, farmyards. It could be a smaller area and power a much more huge area like major cities. Absolutely. That's the key because space is a commodity. It always is. Yeah. Always will be. Hey, even even in the desert, it's it, it fish. Always go with efficiency. It, it, in the American Southwest desert, the Mojave Desert, whatever, uh, Utah, uh, New Mexico, South Texas, Arizona. Space is crucial. To utilize 
desert that's providing nothing for you and to put these solar plants to build these solar plants there like the German tower in uh, in Spain Germany has a tower that uh, does I a great if, job if I were solar tower engineers I would start trying to find ways to irrigate these deserts and see what you can do oh, sure because look mm -hmm. what they've done in Saudi Arabia some of these deserts <clears throat> building these oasis in Israel in these desert areas building these areas with normal grass Ir irrigation farming <clears throat> well Israel is a per you can irrigate anything as you know it's a perfect example now uh, you can irrigate anything <clears throat> desert or not yeah I will utilize the land exactly exactly utilize the land uh, like the drought we're having in the United States they say scientists say it might be permanent because of climate change but, well, it, no, but if it, no, you're kind of right but you're kind of wrong it might be permanent in a way but in the way you're wrong, it's going to get worse. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Or you adapt to it. You grow, uh, you grow, you grow things that grow in a desert, like do. dates. But after figs. a while, some things it can get so hot, and the human being is adapt. It's not adapting enough. Is it coming to the point where we're going to have to build glass or plastic or plasma bubbles over all the cities because it's becoming too hot for any human being or animal life to exist? Yeah. What have you? Where are we headed? Where are we going? So you feel that not even date palms and, and figs would, like desert fruits, would, would flourish? Can people live on just those things? You need more than just that. But, we're, but you, you gotta, you gotta adapt to survive, unfortunately, oh, you know? You know, we're, we're just not changing <laughs> fast enough. Yeah. Remember, every species ever, ever known to man that's been on this planet, every species has become extinct. And they, the scientists say the human being is long overdue to become extinct. And that we're, at the rate we're going with technology and destroying ourselves with more devastating weapon or weapon systems or weaponry, that we could be pushing our extinction even faster. I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, I too. But uh, well, speaking of what you just stated, did you do you know that right now, the super volcano on the Yellowstone National Park it's not looking good. is not looking good. It's melting it's not the not asphalt good. roads. Well, I don't mean to interrupt you, but also Old Faithful. That could erupt at any time. That is a volcano. It's not just a geyser, as they say. No, it's a flat Underneath volcano. is a lot. And they say that's somewhat overdue, too, for a massive eruption or explosion. Maybe that's why... So, uh, well, that's why the government has built all these extra FEMA camps throughout the United States because maybe they're expecting well, something to happen. Not to get off your subject. Something to go down. But how do you know how many others you don't even know about that they've built? How do you, me, or the public even know what missiles we're launching almost every day? Who knows what they're putting up in space? Yeah. They're not going to publicize everything. No. You don't know. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Yeah. I would bet that I'm right, though, that they're sending up more secret satellites that we have no idea. Well, they closed Area 51, which means they must have moved it. Or maybe they didn't move it. You're right, and you're wrong again. They did supposedly move to Utah, but I don't think they ever shut down the real Area 51. Mm -hmm. I think they probably let everything grow over the grass and the weeds coming up, and it looks dilapidated, but I'll bet underneath there's a lot still going on there. I would bet on it. But I'll bet they moved a lot of things to the Utah or wherever. My Flat, all classified is. information. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. But do you think they... <clears throat> And you can't blame our government. You can't tell people everything. If you tell our people everything, the, our enemies will know everything. You can't. There's do a lot this. of blabbermouths out there. You've got to yeah. be secretive. I mean, for all we know, that gentleman in, in, in Florida, well, he probably, he might have passed on his anti gravity uh, uh, who knows knowledge to the to. government. Who knows whose hands that might have fallen into? Because that's. You're talking, a, you're, you're, talking, you're, talking, you're talking about the coral compound I told you all about. Right. Yeah. And they feel that extraterrestrials use anti gravity to, you know. I would bet my life on it, yes. Yeah. Um, now, getting back to, um, well, we hope it doesn't blow. Well, of course, if the super volcano blew, the, the amount of ash would surround the planet Earth, blotting out the sun. Temperature would drastically dip, go down. You know, another ice age. Destroy crops. You had that. You destroy. had that with the other. Uh, in the past, what they say destroyed the dinosaurs, the prehistoric period. The great asteroid. Yeah. Uh, hit the Yucatan uh, Peninsula. You remember when Mount St. Helens out in Washington? They found we had a lot of ash fallout over here on the East Coast. You're talking three thousand miles or two, or two thousand, almost three thousand. Yeah, but they miles. said they said Mount St. Helens. 
has not really blown to her to her capacity. It only took one little side off. Let's be fair. It's here. an active volcano. The whole here. thing did not blow. It was one yeah. side. There's a lot more still to go. But the Mount St. Helens, like Mount Etna, which blew recently, is a, an active volcano. Well, can I interrupt you again? And Seattle's not that far. There is no such no. thing as a dead volcano. Only dormant ones. Dormancy. They're right. all active underneath. None are actually dead. Yeah, Mount Fuji, right. Mount St. Helens, active. Mount Etna. They're all active. They're just lying dormant right Mount now. Vis meaning, meaning at any time, who yeah. knows? Who Mount, knows? Mount Vesuvius in, in, in uh, uh, Italy, Mount Etna. That's I just, right. Uh, Mount Penatubo in the Philippines. You just don't know. They're all dormant to different they're degrees. They're sleeping right now. Right. Who knows when they might wake up, sadly. I hope they don't. Right. But, but, but Yellowstone uh, is a super volcano. And uh, it would destroy crops, and uh, we just hope to God it doesn't happen. But hey, maybe the government knows something through scientists that we don't know. Well, the th oh, I'm sure our scientists know a lot. They're not telling us because they do want to want to allay fears, public fears. They don't want panic to uh, take over. And we're, we're really we're talking about a snap of a finger. What we've been going through here. This is this stuff's festering for thousands upon hundreds of thousands or millions of years. Did you know the Come media? Did you know the media uh, last year kept a secret <clears throat> that a killer asteroid came very close to the Earth and yeah. missed us? Yeah, and it was by by spatial terms, it was very close. It was a doomsday asteroid? Very close. Yes, yeah. that's so, true. Uh, Barely missed us, but yeah. there's a lot of activity out we are, there. Think about everything. It's like a massive pinball machine. All these things are flying all over Meteor these showers, balls, all asteroid over the place. belts. Look, yeah. how, look at how many hundreds of thousands of tons of, of meteorite pieces hit the Earth's atmosphere every sure. day. Sure, look at the moon. Where do you think the craters come yeah, from? Thank God they blow. I mean, they, they not blow up. They, uh, they burn up. But uh, it's every day. Come on now. Shooting stars. Put things yeah. in perspective here. Let's think. Yeah. We're not in a little some cocoon where we're oblivious or safe from all evil and bad. No, we're not. We're in a massive universal pinball machine. I lack of a better word, right. phrase. Exactly. So Exactly. What's coming? All I can see is God help us. And should something of this magnitude ever hit? There's no way to get out of it. The best way to say it is kiss your ass goodbye. Yeah, and don't and don't That's pay attention and don't pay attention to those uh, everything will be those fine. early 1960 instructions where if you're in a class oh, at school, duck and cover. Duck and cover. That's right, because kids, nothing stops radiation like a school desk. You just duck and cover. No nuclear bomb can hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like the old tan, tan top school that get underneath. That'll stop all radiation coming at <laughs> you. Well, that's kind of like the other government films back then on how to date and not get sexually transmitted. Transmit the, oh, they were funny. And they were so corny. The guys wore their sports coats, and the little bow ties, it, and their language. It's like, you know, I would never seen a girl in my life before. Gee, you're swell. Cheapers, cheapers, yeah. Say, cheapers, well. after the dance Saturday night, maybe we could go to the malt shop. And if I was there, I'd say, yeah. And if you're lucky, maybe Wally and the Beeve will be there too, and you can meet them too. <laughs> so let's be honest. Here, okay? <laughs> but it was, it, it was so horny. Yeah, that's how, that's it was how so people, corny, it was wonderful. But that's how people spoke. They they had to beat around the bush, so Gee, to speak. Gee, you're swell. Gee, you're swell. It's almost nauseating. Yeah. I know. We remember uh, uh, Lucille Ball and uh, uh, and Desi Arnaz. Separate beds. They had their their pajamas were only up that, to their, their and same chin. With the, one of my favorite shows, the Dick Van Dyke Show. They're in separate beds. Uh, I don't understand the censorship of this country. Well, that's the puritanical the religiousness. Puritanical religiousness. Well, why do we let them get away with it? That's a very good question. So what? They don't we're, like science. They're a married couple. Married couple sleep in the same bed. So they, what's your problem here, people? They don't. They don't like. Uh, why do we cave into them? They don't like the. Sh they hate the show Cosmos. Then hate. They hate science. Then hate. Then hate. Why? You're, you're a select few. Then why does the media give them so much face time? Is I what know. I like to know. I don't know. Unless they have uh, certain ins to the higher ups of the CEOs or something, but I would say well, we're sorry you feel that way, but we're showing uh, hopefully some semblance of reality here, even though it's a comedy show. I, I, I was, uh, I found a um, a uh, a very very humorous old advertisement from the uh, 
from the 1800s for a chastity belt. Oh my. And it had some religious comments in there, you know, uh, uh, about uh, fornication, you know, and adultery and everything. And, it's, and it was meant for a woman in a workplace well, to wear. Well, let's be fair, Jimmy. With, throughout history and mankind, remember, the world was flat at one time, they thought, too. Right. Well, you so know, man has really, and uh, back in the old days, if yeah. you think their way, like some of our most famous researchers or scientists or people of their ages, if they they didn't deny what they did. They were uh, uh, murdered, put to death. Yeah, the Catholic Church. Uh, they gave Galileo a hard they time. Didn't want, don't ever disagree with them. Oh no, no. Copernicus. No. Don't you make waves? Who do you think you uh, are? Uh, da Vinci. Galileo, Copernicus, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Nostradamus, they all had a hide from the Inquisition. They sure did, otherwise they'd be put to death. And yeah. many were. Yeah, they didn't like science. But science... Well, they did, as long as it went along with what they believed. But, but you see, science exposes the liar. Science exposes the real truth. And, and if you are giving misinformation, it's, it's science that will expose you, and they don't want to be what exposed. What they lived on, and they still do to this day, is they lived on and live on fear. Fear. Scare tactics, basically. Right, and faith is simply like wishful thinking. Faith is not fact. Faith is hope. Okay, it's that simple. Faith, right. I have faith. That means you hope. It doesn't mean you know. Faith, remember, faith is not fact. Right. It's that simple. Yeah. Now, getting back to the uh, solar energy, I, w I looked at a map and I couldn't believe how little of the Sahara Desert is required. There's a few acres per se, to, not, to, not to, few, but a number of acres. To supply electricity for the entire world. Yeah. And yeah. Sahara is huge, we all know. It showed it. It's a tiny yes, South little, Jersey. About the size of. Yeah, well. Yeah, a little yeah, pinch. A little He's pinch. Or, or Rhode Island or something. But the point is that, that we know the system is rigged, we know the system is corrupt, we know big oil pays off a lot of people, and uh, they don't, they, they have, they know that we don't, we don't need uh, uh, fossil fuels to produce energy. I'm sure the scientists and the government know that. But these people are just paid off to keep quiet, you know, and that's it. A lot will accept the payoff. Or to oppress it. To yeah, keep it down. Keep it down. Quiet. But, but political corruption is, is nothing new. It's been around for probably since the founding fathers. Gee, really? You think so? You know. Yeah, it has been. And unfairness and somebody with, with the better idea getting screwed over. Yeah, when it really comes down to they really care about the American people, yes, to some extent. Overall, a lot of them can be bought. Yeah. Well, you remember the movie Tucker? Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. The car. It screwed him over, you know. And uh, it, it, that's just the tip of the iceberg. They screwed over Tesla because Tesla provided. De DeLorean, too? DeLorean. Yeah, Tesla was able to provide free electricity for the world. Mm -hmm. They went with Thomas Edison. It was J.P. Morgan and Rockefeller went with Thomas Edison because Edison agreed to sell mm -hmm. electricity. Basic politics. It's politics. William as H. Usual. William H. Moore, as usual, unfortunately. <laughs> William H. Moore, I, we're very happy to have you on this week's Uncensored, hard-hitting truth. And now, if you don't mind, I will head to the little cat box. Everybody, bye-bye. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com.
Okay. We're back. Um, I just want to um, give a little detail about one of the many things I discussed with uh, William H. Morrill III. I thank you, William, for a great show as always. The, the revolutionary um, uh, solar device created by IBM, this is the detail um, about it. The IBM, it's called High Voltaic Thermal System capable of concentrating the power of 2,000 suns safely up to 5,000 times that and it also produces pure drinking water in the process of converting the solar energy into electricity okay and uh, each one centimeter squared chip produces 200 to 250 watts of electricity every eight hours okay so that's what it's called you can look it up people the IBM high voltaic thermal system revolutionizing um, solar panels as we know it solar energy so I haven't heard from IBM in a long time because they they have they have been out of the, uh, the, the the PC and laptop business, so to speak. They they focus their obviously they focus their attention on uh, bigger and better things, which is this high voltaic thermal system. Now, um, if you're wondering what that banner is all about during the show earlier uh, what happened is um, I believe the PETA organization uh, that protects animals, animal rights, right? Animal cruelty, PETA. Um, People for the ethical treatment of animals. Yes. They uh, suggested to the owner of the Washington Redskins to uh, keep the name but change the logo from an Indian head to a redskin potato. And uh, they, they brought it to the patent office in Washington and the government, U.S. government, turned down the owner of the Redskins. I thought it was really cool. It looked really great. Somebody made a logo, you know, of the red potato. With the, with the Native American feathers and it had the, uh, the gold letters, you know, Washington Redskins with the Redskin potato. So maybe the problem was the feathers. Maybe they, they should have gotten rid of the Native American feathers and maybe the government would have approved the uh, Patent office the, has nothing patent, to do with the that. logo, you know, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's a potato, red skin potato. To get a patent, you need a workable demonstration model. That's all. In other words, if they would have provided the helmet or the logo, well, it was. It was. It's the. It's the logo. The logo oh, so was on the banner. Trademark. Yes, yeah, the trademark. Yeah. Where instead of using the Indian head, the Native American head, they used the red skin potato. That's what they call it, a red skin potato. Now some people got are now getting offended that we call the red skin potato a red skin potato. But guess what? You people out there that are so super sensitive walking on eggshells all the time, guess what? Well, you want us to walk on eggshells. The potato has red skin. Therefore, it is a red skin potato. potato. Red skin potato has red skin has nothing to do with Native Americans. So get off your high horse and and stop the bullshit. You know, I, I, I'm uh, I'm very very sympathetic for your plight, but don't cause people to rename 
the potato with red skin. Don't don't you know what what are they gonna do? They, they, they're gonna make sunburn potato. They're gonna make grocers call it a scarlet potato, a scarlet potato, scarlet letter. That goes back to adultery. Crimson, a crimson potato. You can't use the word red. Give me a break. I think it's a great idea for a football team to have a potato on both sides of its helmet. <laughs> Hold on for a second. Where's my levity bells? Here they are. Oh. What do you think, people? The levity bells. The red skin potatoes. The Washington red skin potatoes. All right. That's all I wanted to say, along with the IBM uh, thingy. thingy. And uh, we're, we are... Um, <coughs> We are now ready to sink our piranha teeth or crocodile teeth or whatever teeth we choose back into these readings. For the balance right. for the balance. Let of, us put on our psychiatric hats. For the balance now. of our show. Or another dear, dear Abby? Yeah. Okay. My husband and I have been married for nineteen years. We've had our ups and downs. But the last few months have been hell. Especially if they're in bed, their ups and downs. Ha ha ha! My husband lies about paying bills. Yeah, he's hiding his money from his wife because you know you don't want to. Uh, you don't. You don't want to like give up anything he wants to buy. I don't blame him. When I ask, have you paid the rent? Ooh. I mean, in full. Oh. Not a partial payment. That's important. We have now been evicted. Oh boy. I take back what I said. For non-payment of rents. And we are living in a hotel. Well, what did he expect to happen if he if he refused to pay the rent? The husband. Just stupid ass. Utilities have been cut off because of his partial payments. That too. Electricity. And his lying about their having been paid in full. And I'm tired of it. What did he think was going to happen? It's not just the two of us who have been affected because of his mismanagement of money, but also our two children. Ah, they have children. Who are caught up in this mess. This is weird. I'm not one of those wives who sit around not knowing what's going on with the finances. I have bills. I pay for the house, too. And after they are paid, I give him money to pay other bills. She gives him money to pay other bills. So he turns over his paycheck to her. Maybe he's rebelling. I am sick and tired. I want a divorce. What other choice do I have? pay the bills together and you know uh, well he, he probably gives her an allowance she pays the important bills and maybe she withholds money when he wants to do stuff and he's rebelling I don't know you say this has been going on for a few months where is the money going that isn't being spent on bills oh good question you say you give your husband money. Is he bringing in any? Or is he jobless? Before you decide to walk away, you need to understand why it is that your husband has been lying to you particularly if this is recent behavior. If you are better at handing money, handling money than he is, then you should be handling the finances and the paying of the bills. Yeah. I'd recommend a marriage counselor before I recommend divorce. Yeah, that's usually the process of trying to save the marriage before ending it. 
Sounds familiar, doesn't it? But uh, that's the process, yeah? Find out why the lies, find out where the money is going. If it's not going to pay the rent and the utilities, find out where it's going, what is going on here. When I was a child, I mean, you, you, Bill, or, or the, the article, or the reading? The article. The, okay, okay. When I was a child, my mother always told me to close the bathroom door after using the toilet so as not to allow any offensive odors to escape. Oh, so, so the next person who enters the bathroom should smell it. Instead of letting it dissipate. Oh, I'm an adult now. Smart idea. Have a nice home and entertain often. I am dismayed that most of my guests leave the bathroom door wide open. Because they don't want the stank to stay in there. It is particularly offensive. That it is. Because the proximity of the powder room to the dining room. Then people should walk into and get hit in the face what with What about it. odor assassin? Disgusting. An air freshener. Yeah, whatever. Febreze. Whatever. Open a window. Open a crack at the bathroom window. Leave it open a couple inches I or so. I think maybe some people have opened a crack in the bathroom. That's, yeah, obviously. You know? <laughs> Brown water blowout. Uh, dear Abby's answer to these. She even gives advice on the powder room on, on number two. <laughs> because you prefer for it to be shut at all times, rather than post a letter from me on the door, consider a t installing an automatic spring closer on it. Or, or open the window open a few inches. Or post a small sign that reads, please, shut door when leaving. Doesn't dear Abby realize if, if, the, if the air doesn't go anywhere, the next person is going to have a horrible t uh, experience walking into that bathroom? <laughs> Believe me, it, it, it has to go somewhere. You know, whether you have a fan in your bathroom or whether you, you open up the window a little bit when you have guests, it has to go somewhere. It cannot stay trapped in the bathroom. Now, odor assassin and Febreze seem to clear it up. Yeah, well, I mean, they, uh, at, at home, I mean, I have like a tropical f mango fruity uh, air freshener spray. Uh -huh. um, you know, or... Uh, Citrus. Yeah, well, you can't go wrong with pine, too. I, I love pine. Uh, or pine lemon. It's not a good smell for cats. They don't like pine? No. Pine, lemon? How about lemon? Lemon is okay, but not pine. Why, pine hurts them? And if you clean with pine salt or that sort of stuff, not good. You mean their health? Affects their That's health? That's correct. Really? Oil of pine hurts cats. Well, it hurts reptiles too. It affects their nervous system. Like uh, they say, never use pine chips as a bedding. You know, like uh, the cedar, sh cedar, chip. cedar shavings or pine shavings. That, that, that they usually put in, you know, gerbils for rodents and, and rabbits uh, and guinea pigs and yeah, hamsters. Hamsters, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's 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 okay for them, but not for for reptiles. The uh, the uh, aromatic oils uh, uh, hurt their immune system. I mean, their nervous system damage their nervous system. Anyway, I guess cats are sensitive to that also and uh, like dogs are very sensitive to chocolate cocoa dogs should never be allowed to eat cocoa at all it's toxic i'm an inmate incarcerated for financial crimes oh is it uh, uh obviously he's low level he's certainly not one of the big boys in the banks yeah i was going to say yeah. he's not bernie madoff I have been down for three years. I'm expected to be released in a few months. During this time, a distant cousin 
and I have become very close. She is either my fourth or fifth cousin. Oh, so if you wanted to have an affair with her, there would be no, 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 no defective. Baby. She has flown here yeah. to visit on several occasions and writes me often. We speak on the phone a few times a week. She lives on the West Coast. Over the last year, our relationship has become romantic. She's a fourth or fifth cousin? She has started to speak of us being married. Oh, gosh. And having children when I get out. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. She's pushing for that, huh? She's even planning to move to my home state. Is there anything wrong with us being romantically involved and having a sexual relationship? I'm creeped out about the thought of intermarriage. Well, the royalty uh, did it. The royal families did it. Uh, hillbillies do it too, but... Yeah, it but can't, that it was can't. before any genetic damage had occurred. Well, you can't... Like with Adam and Eve, they were perfect. Well, yeah, but you can't... So their children were yeah, genetically it, perfect. It cannot be first, second, or even third cousins. It has to be a distant cousin, from what I understand. The worst part is, this would actually be a healthy person for me to associate with once I'm released. I'm just confused about it. Mm -hmm. Answer. There are some women who are attracted to incarcerated men. Well, it's like a fetish. Yeah, that's true. Well, but what about the cousin part? And I think in rare cases, these relationships can work out. But to me, it seems basically foolhardy, if not pathological, to pursue a romance and a future with a repeat offender. Oh, he's a repeat offender. Yeah. Oh, then he'll be a re repeat offender again. But hey, it's her and your life. If you're worried about distant cousins marrying, think of the English royal family. They've been doing this for generations. You're distant. Genetically speaking, you two have nothing to worry about. Though genetic testing before having children would be a good idea. Yeah. My sister-in-law lives vicariously through her 15-year-old daughter. Oh, like those uh, those crazy backstage mothers on uh, was it toddlers and tiaras or? stupid show. In my sister-in-law's mind, my niece will be a successful dancer. Oh boy, here we go. The best and cutest cheerleader and the most popular girl in high school. In other words, I'll, I'll tell her how to become the most popular girl in high school. Spread your legs. Get blowjobs. Bingo. Huh? You won't spend no Saturday night at home alone. No, you'll have a bunch of dudes come knocking on your door. <laughs> she talks about her incessantly. All of her time and money and energy is devoted to my niece and her activities. She thinks my niece is lucky to have a mom like her. I think it's cruel. Cruel to the to any any minor any child, you know. Uh, I mean, to, to put that kind of pressure on that kid, you know, uh, make the child uh, do things that it does not want to do, you know, or uh, force it to learn a musical instrument or force it to be a competitive dancer when it doesn't really like doing it. You know, it, 
she ignores her husband and son and ridicules them for being jealous if they bring it up. Sounds like she's nuts. Everyone else just rolls their eyes and talks about her behind her back. Did, did they ever ask the, the daughter how she feels about this? My niece is a lovely, smart, pretty, normal 15-year-old. Niece, okay. My instinct tells me my sister-in-law's obsession with my niece is abusive. What do you think? Oh, so it's, so it's the aunt. The, who is concerned. The, who is obsessed with the 15-year-old. No, the mommy. Oh, the mom. Now, who's the one trying to come to the, the girl's rescue? The aunt? The aunt. Well, what does... The, what does the 15 year old, I mean she's not a baby, she's 15 years old. What does she think about, how does she feel about being pressured to be the perfect dancer, cheerleader, whatever? What does she want to do? That's like forcing, rich people forcing the kid to learn how to play piano or violin. You know, and, 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 and you hear stories of the kid being yelled at or you know hit on the hand if they don't do it right and I mean the kid will learn eventually the kid that the kid will hate the musical instrument maybe she's not into this dancing career I don't see how this is abusive necessarily although the imbalance of attention in the household is certainly neglectful it brings to mind the poor offspring of various pushy, pregnant pageant women and TV dance moms. <laughs> Dads also do this to their kids, by the way. Yeah, Little League Baseball. Most often through sports. Yeah, they yell at the umpires. And like, like their son is so special, there's no other kids in the world. Your sister-in-law's behavior is somewhat pathetic. A mother living through her teenage daughter is an old and tired trope. This sweet and lovely teen will grow up, and unless her mother finds another hobby, the daughter will have to reject her in order to differentiate and become her own person. Yeah, she'll drive her daughter away. I hope you will be supportive of both children, and if you have something to convey to your sister-in-law, you should tell her rather than gossip about her or criticize her behind her back. Why don't these mothers um, take dancing lessons and, and do it themselves as they were growing up? All right, they, they, it was like a, I should have and I could have, you know, and, they're, and, they're, and now they're trying to torment the poor child. Well, maybe they didn't make it and now they're living through the dark. Yeah. Well, like a lot of uh, uh, coaches, people who coach uh, uh, at school, uh, they might coach Little League, you know, or, or they might be teachers. They, 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 they're usually people who try to make it big in that sport and, you know, couldn't cut the mustard. They couldn't mm -hmm. make it, so now they teach. So now they can cut the cheese, though. Yeah. Well, now they ch now they teach because you know they're they probably have excellent basic knowledge in that particular sport or uh, teaching how to play that musical instrument. Which that that was a bad example because there are there are there are many well-established famous musicians who also teach. But you know what I mean, like 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 a sport, for example. Or, or being a choreographer, uh, or being a ballroom dancer, and they teach uh, because they have great basic knowledge, but they they never made a big, so they have nothing else to do but to teach others, give them the basics. But you still have to have the natural born <coughs> talent to reach that high level where you're in the spotlight and you're making money off you off of what you do to be a professional 
You have to have the natural ability. You know, it's like if you taught somebody how to play chess, <gasps> and they knew the, all the basic moves by heart, but they could never win a game. Because they have to put in at least eight hours a day of practice if they want to be a grand master. But they have to have the brains to, uh, it's, it's like a kid learning violin. If you don't yes, have the developing basic... Developing any skill, you have to put in the time to practice. True. Uh -huh. True. Then it becomes second knowledge to you. Yeah, well the same thing applies to baseball. Yeah. You know, if, if you have a if you have a, a, a person who tries out for a farm league in Florida for a major league baseball team, and that individual started as a little tyke in little league, and and had good coaches, and, and the dad was behind them, and he, and he and he put in a lot of practice, and he played little league every year. Well, that that young man is going to have much better luck trying out for the farm team. Because he's going to have, have acquired the necessary skill yeah. along with the talent and whatever else it takes. Yeah, it'll be second nature for him to go out and try out on the field. Yeah. yeah. Sarah Bareilles played softly through the surround sound speakers of my husband's 2003 Mercedes compressor as I sat idling at a light. Is this another uh, psychological story? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'd never been to this church before, but I could see it from where I was across from an old park abandoned in the chilly September air. The clouds hung low as I pulled the sleek pewter machine into the lot. But I wasn't going to pray or attend services. I was picking up food stamps. From church? Even then, I couldn't quite believe it. This wasn't supposed to happen to people like me. I grew up in a white, affluent suburb where failure seemed harder than success. In college, I studied biology and journalism. I, I worked for good money at a local hospital, which afforded me the opportunity to network at journalism conferences. So this is a smart, a well-established middle-class man from a, from a good, from an affluent suburb suburban neighborhood suburban this is a woman oh this is a woman she's driving her husband's 2003 mercedes compressor to get food stamps to pick up food stamps that's how i landed my first news job as an associate producer in hartford connecticut i climbed the ladder quickly free to work any hours in any location for any pay I moved from market to market, always achieving a better title, a better salary, succeeding! 2007 was a grand year for me. I moved back home from San Diego, where I produced Good Morning San Diego. Oh, wow quickly secured my next big gig as a producer for, in Boston, excuse me, for 6 p.m. news. Wow. The pay wasn't great, but it was more than enough to support me. And my boyfriend was making good money, too, as a copy editor for the Hartford Cor Current. When I found out I was pregnant in February 2008, it was a shock. But nothing we couldn't handle. So I hope I have the uh, I hope I have the second part of this here. Get an interesting. Yeah, that would be smart. Yeah. So.
So, so far we have a self-made middle class woman. Who, yeah, okay, who, I got the second part. All right. I discovered it was actually twins, as a matter of fact. I panicked a little. But not because I worried for our future. My middle class life still seemed perfectly secure. Mm. I just wasn't sure I wanted to do that much work. The weeks flew by. My boyfriend proposed. And we bought a house. Then, just three weeks after we closed, the market crashed. The house we paid $240,000 for was suddenly worth only $150,000. But they had to pay a mortgage on for $240,000. Uh, yeah, now, these are the people that, of course, have gotten no help yet from Mr. Obama and the House and the Senate. Still facing foreclosure. A mortgage should oh, should. But be we bailed out Wall Street. Wall Street got bailed out, yeah, of mm -hmm. course, and cor well, big corporations. But yeah, but a mortgage should. I mean, to, uh, to be fair, a mortgage should be based on the, uh, the current, worth of the house, the current worth of the house. Yeah, but it ain't, because you took out two hundred forty thousand dollar loan on your mortgage. That's what you're paying back. So the no matter the, what your house so, is worth. So the seller got his or her price and yeah. took the money, ran, and then the market crashed and the house dipped. It was okay though. We were still making enough money to cover the exorbitant mortgage payments. Then we weren't. Two weeks before my children were born, Ugh. my future husband found himself staring at a pink slip. Oh, like so many do. The days of unemployment turned into weeks Should've... and months and eventually years. Yeah? yeah, that's a very true story. Oh, because he was lazy. Cut it out. Oh, Republicans would say he's yes. lazy, he don't want to work. That's correct. Then my kids were born. Six weeks early. They were just three pounds each at birth. Six weeks early? What the hell are they coming out that early for? Barely the length of my shoe. We fed them through a little tube we attached to our pinky fingers because their mouths weren't strong enough to suck. I want well, why are they home? Why aren't they in the hospital? Yeah, they should be in a hospital. In the incubators. If, if they're underweight like that. Yeah. We spent 10 days in the hospital waiting for them to increase in size. Okay, okay. They're in the hospital, all right. They never did. Try as I might, I couldn't get my babies to put on weight. With their lives at risk, I switched from breast milk to formula at about $15 a can. We went through dozens a week. These kids have a digestive disorder or something? In just two months, we'd gone from making a combined $120,000 a year to making just $25,000. and leeching out funds to a mortgage we could not afford. Yeah. Our savings dwindled and then disappeared. So I did what I had to do. I signed up for Medicaid and the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, WIC. WIC, right. It's not easy to qualify. You must be pregnant or up to six months postpartum. I had to fill out at least six forms, furnish my social security card, birth certificate, marriage license. I sat through exams, meetings, screenings. They had a lot of questions about the house. Wasn't it an asset? Hadn't we just bought it? Yeah, they want you to be in the gutter. 
they questioned every last cent we'd ever made. Yeah, but they don't they don't put corporations and, and, and the rich through this when when they get these subsidies. No, of course not. No, oh no, not when they get when they get siphon all that, up, siphon up, siphon up. When they get all that free money from the government, taxpayers' money go to the uh, the rich. They don't they don't put the rich through this. Not at all. Did we have stock options or pensions? Did we have savings? Yes, they ask you all that, yes. They also ask... I believe they do. I know that the state of New Jersey does. Whether you have whole life insurance. Yeah. That can be surrendered. Yeah. Well, and New they'll Jer pay you. New Jersey... Um, they call that income. Especially... Uh, there's a Republican running it like there is now. They'll 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 go through your life with a fine tooth comb. Well, I got news for them. Whole life insurance is not income. Because if you do surrender that and get the money, you have nothing to bury you. They don't look. It's lo burial insurance. They don't look long not income. They don't look long term. The right wing, do they? Because they are looking for tricks to keep you off right. the and, dole. And what kind of money are we talking about? We're talking about a, a, a crumbs, a few crumbs here and there, compared to the trillions that the fat cats are getting for free of taxpayers' money, and without the uh, uh, interrogation and many uncomfortable questions. I had See? to send them my three most recent check stubs to prove I was making as little as I said I was. On top of this, I had to get my vitals checked and blood work taken. Oh wow, this is Connecticut? What state are we, we talking about now? Did we say it? I think... Uh, Did she go back to San... No, she went back, she went to Boston. From San Diego, she went to Boston, right? I think it's Connecticut. But they bought the house in Connecticut. Okay. I think so. So I had her vitals. She had, her, had, had to have her vitals tested. Yeah. To determine whether I was at risk of improper nourishment without the program. It's very bourgeois. Ugh. Not. But I did it. Driving to the WIC office the first time was scary. Why is that? Well, I'm sure she would be pointed out as a welfare queen. She arrived in, in a Mercedes under Reagan. They arrived in a Cadillac, the welfare queen. So everybody would be staring at her. Her, uh, I'm sure when she mentioned the vehicle, maybe that's why they were busting her... her um, chops here um, because of the, the car. They were suspicious of her. It wasn't an office. And the house. Like I thought it would be. It was the basement of a dreary church. We sat in disused pews waiting to be called for our coupons. Which would get us some tuna. Oh. Some Cheerios. A few crumbs, like I said. A gallon of milk. Oh, wow. And wow. baby formula. That's real financial help from the wonderful United States government. And it's probably GMO. Probably. So all this bullshit just for food stamps and WIC program. This is not even like cash assistance or anything, right? This must have been some time ago because they don't have coupons anymore. No, no, no. You you have a, a card. card that looks like a debit card or right. credit card. You swipe it. Yeah. 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 Call families first. Families first. When in reality, EBT. Families are not or first. Or cash. Families are not first. <laughs> they just call it like the like the clear skies and that's correct. That's what Republicans do all the time. Families first. They name their bills exactly what they aren't. To make people think that they're doing something positive for them. Yeah. It should be families last. 
Families not at all. Should be corporations first. That's, that's, that's what they really Corporations mean. are people, my friend. They're people. All right, uh, we're we're at the end. No, we're not. Oh, we're not. Uh, this is what a, the hell? We got more here. But of the same story. That's correct. Uh, let's finish it because this this long story is a perfect example of the, the, the typical American family today. What's happening? What's to going them on with right. this with this this economy and um, lack of job market and um, just political corruption causing it all. All right, continue. Using the coupons was even worse. The stares, the faux concern, the pity, the outrage. I hated it. One time an old, kind-looking man with a bit of a hunch was standing behind me with just a six-pack of soda, waiting to check out. The entire contents of my cart were displayed out on the conveyor belt. Mm -hmm. When he noticed the flash of large white paper stubs in my hand, he touched me on the shoulder. I was scared that he was going to give me money. Instead, he gave me a small rectangular card. He asked me to accept Jesus into my heart so that my troubles would disappear. Just like that. Just like that, and I ain't, and I don't even, I don't even have to be part of 144,000. Well, that's what they do. There's people that go around proselytizing the, the born again evangelical type. I think I managed a half a smile before breaking into long jogging strides out of there. Well, it's a lot better than what some women had to deal with back then in the supermarket criticisms because. Uh, you know. Yeah, look at that. You got used to that. You can buy all the steak and the lobster. Yeah, I'm paying I don't get nothing. I pay for I, you. you I'm kind of paying mistake. for your groceries through my taxes. Yeah. Rah, rah, rah. I ain't yeah. got shit. I don't want to pay for nobody else's. Uh, you lazy you, bum. If, if a relative lazy of mine, bum. if somebody opened their mouth to me, I'd say, mind your own fucking business before I close your mouth permanently. <gasps> the workers were calling after me as to whether I still wanted my receipt. That was one of the better times. Once a girl at the register actually stood up for me when an older mother of three saw the coupons and started chastising my purchase of root beer. Mind your, I would say, mind your own fucking business. They were buy two, get one free. Nobody's damn business to open their mouth to any stranger. Surely you don't need those, she said. Fuck off. Wick pays for juice for you people. Fuck off. You people, go fuck yourself. The girl, who couldn't have been more than 19, flashed her eyes up to my face and saw my grimace as I white-knuckled the counter in front of me, preparing my cold shoulder. This woman, Who are you? This woman sounds like one of those passive ultra liberals that that are non-confrontational. Who are you, the soda police? She asked loudly. She doesn't owe anybody an explanation. Really? This is the girl at the register. Oh, you mean the cashier? She's hollering at the woman. Said, "Who are you, the soda police?" Yeah. But 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 the uh, the woman paying with food stamps did not say anything to her see what a what a what a wimp anyone bother you about the pound of candy you're buying <laughs> the woman huffed off to another register and i'm sure she complained about that girl I, meanwhile, thanked her profusely. I would have told management that that woman was harassing another customer who was paying with food stamps. That's her, he, that's her, that was harassment. That woman owed no one an explanation. I've got a son, she said softly. I know what it's like. That's the funny thing about being poor. 
Everyone has an opinion on it. Everyone feels entitled to share. That was especially true about my husband's Mercedes. Over and over again, people ask why we kept that car. 2003, right? It's an old Mercedes. Get off my damn back, I would have said it. It's 2003. Offering to sell it in their yards or on the internet for us. And, and drive what? Could they afford to get uh, uh, to pay off a small subcompact, brand new? If people they got a newer car. People don't think like that. They don't think like or that. Or a Ford Focus or whatever it is, you know, or a Kia or a Hyundai. You, you, you got to get full coverage with, with, with these cars. You got to make payments. It was better for him to keep the 2003 Mercedes. Mm -hmm. They owe no one an explanation. Mind your own fucking business, people. You can't be that bad off, a distant relative said after inviting himself over for lunch. Inviting himself over? Get the fuck out. You still got that baby in all its glory. I would have grabbed him by the collar and his pantaloons, and I would have threw him head first out the door. Sometimes it was more direct. All from a place of love, of course. I'll give him direct. I'll give you direct. You want the shillelagh, or you want my USDA choice grade A fist down your throat? Sell the Mercedes! Now! No! A friend Keep it. sent to me! Keep it, just to spite these people. Keep the Mercedes. He doesn't get to keep his toys now. He doesn't get to keep it? Who are they to say? Well, that sounds like... Uh, Who that, are they to say that? that? Uh, congressman or senator and say, uh, you know, like, our, our poor people in America are all fat and have refrigerators. Oh, yeah. They want it. Mm. They don't feel the poor... Was that Michelle Bachman or no, Palin? No, I'm not sure. I said, it might have been Gomar. Gomar. Gomar Pyle? Hold on. Gomar Pyle. Gee, Sergeant Carter. <laughs> no, the, the thing is this. Yeah, they said the poor. Oh, I'm sorry. It was it was Bachman or Palin that said the poor are not entitled to an air conditioner. There you go. Now this guy says they're not entitled to a refrigerator. Oh, that's a big luxury. You got a refrigerator. Wow. But as... Uh who was it? Carnegie? Carnegie said, you know, the things change. The things that were uh, 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 not necessaries at one time are now. Well, well it's it, different. Also, there is a real class warfare against the poor. Well, no kidding, they, bingo. That's they, been going on for a long time. They, they don't want you to have an air conditioner or a refrigerator or even be alive. The, the conservatives. Uh, well, that would solve a lot of problems. The conservatives that are loaded with, with loot, with money. Luca. Luca. Scalora. That's Scalora. Faisals. Scalora is a slang term for escarole. It's, a, <laughs> it's like spinach. Yeah, meaning money. Okay. But it wasn't a toy. It was paid off. My husband bought that car in full long before we met. Were we supposed to trade it in for a lousier car we'd have to make payments on? Oh, am I, am I smart or what? Am I intuitive? Old oh, James P. Madonna here. I was, taught, I was saying that before and I never read this article. Only to have that less reliable car break down on us. And you got to make the payments and you got to have full... Oh, you have to have collision on your insurance policy. Ooh. You have to make... You got to have full coverage. And even if we had wanted to do that, here's cash. what people don't understand. The reality of poverty can spring quickly, while the psychological effects take longer to surface. This is a very long but very important reading. When you lose a job, your first thought isn't, Oh my God, I'm poor! I better sell all my stuff. No, you you panic You're, and you get depressed. It's I need another job. Oh yeah, when you when you first lose the job, you you still have optimism in your mind. Now, sure. 
Of course, but you're not facing, uh, you, you, at, at one time you were not facing corporations who send the jobs overseas. And send the money overseas. Right. And Don't bring it here for taxation. And purposes. corporations that are so nitpicky during a job interview that, that they demand not only certificates and uh, and diplomas and degrees, whatever, but they demand experience with the uh, degrees. Nobody wants to train anybody. They want you to just walk in and and go right to work. You forget about entry level from school after people paid uh, uh, exorbitant amounts of money and tuition to go to school, and they owe they owe student loan uh, uh, with interest. You know, and if they go to a tech school, they're they're paying ten, fifteen, twenty grand or whatever or more. To go to a tech school and they and they find out there's no jobs out there after they graduate. It's no, it's different now. When you are scrambling, you hang on to the things that work that bring you some comfort. That Mercedes was one reliable, trustworthy thing in our lives. Yeah, and it was 2003. That's so get off and paid off get off their back a long time ago paid off that's how I found myself one dreary day when my Honda wouldn't start Honda they're good cars usually in my husband's Mercedes at the Wick office oh that's why she had to drive the Mercedes because her Honda would not start that particular day I parked gingerly over one of the many potholes shut off the purring engine and locked it, and then walked briskly to the door, head held high, and not looking in either direction. Now you see, the, the part of the problem is that the these people interfering and making uh, uh, comments at this woman and family, these people are uh, most likely not um, high income or rich. They're probably maybe middle class. Making That's what the high income and rich in corporations have done. They, they, they have turned the poor yeah. against the poor. But the middle class unfairly have the tax burden on their shoulders when the rich are supposed to have the tax burden on their shoulders. So the middle class should not be in a position to make remarks to the poor for having food stamps. They shouldn't, because they shouldn't have any tax burden at all. Now you see what 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 destruction of American families are going on because of political corruption. Well, wait a minute. Now, aren't the conservatives the people of family values? Family values? Yeah. How could the how could rich families know about family values? In every, reality, every time they're up for election, they're the family values. So family value, family values mean if you if you're you get laid off and you can't get a job and you're poor and you're broke, then uh, th their family value is to just let the poor starve to death, die, instead of giving them their two coats. Yeah. Okay. Which would be the biblical thing to do. Yeah. Since they're since they're the best Christians in the world. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. All right, let's wrap it up. To this day, it is the single most embarrassing thing I've ever done. No one spoke to me, but they did stare. Mouths agape. The poverty-stricken mothers struggling with infant car seats. Paperwork and their toddlers never took their eyes off me. I would say, uh, you got an eyeball problem? What are you looking at? The she, don't, she don't say anything. They're looking at the Mercedes. The tall blonde girl walking with purpose on heels from her Mercedes to their grungy den. I didn't feel animosity coming from them more wonderment, maybe a bit of resentment. The most embarrassing part was how I felt 
about myself. How I had so internalized the message of what poor people should or should not have that I felt ashamed to be there with that car. No, they want getting the, food. They want the poor to be so down and out and miserable in the gutter and literally wasting away so their ribs are sticking out. That's well they, they want, want they want you to go for charity to the church. And your now, and that, your relatives. That failed in the nineteen thirties. They weren't able to handle the twenty five million unemployed and etc. The churches they had to set up soup kitchens. And bread. The average church doesn't have that much money. They're lucky if they can fix their leaking roof. Go after the mega churches like Joel Olstein and Benny Hinn and Pat Robertson. Make these people uh, uh, pay taxes. You know, and and make them to help the poor. And he lives in a mansion. And he ain't going to either. Huh? He ain't going to either. Because it's God's will that they are poor, and it's God's will that he is not poor. That's just an excuse for him well, to, uh, yes, to, dis to disobey the Bible itself and not help the poor. He just doesn't want to part with his money. Yeah. Him and his wife, they're, they're miserable, greedy people. You, you know, the guy's always smiling, like he's got that saccharine sweet Cheshire cat smile on his face. It's phony. As if I were not allowed the food because of the car. As if I were a bad person. We've now sold the house. My husband found a job that pays well. We have enough left over for me to go to grad school. President Obama's programs, from the extended unemployment benefits to the tax-free allowance for short selling a home, we could not afford. Yeah, you allowed us to crawl our way out of the hole. And you have workforce program too, where you get to go back to school. I mean, granted, they only give you four thousand wow. dollars for school, but a lot of schools, not all, but some schools will actually say to you, "Okay, I'll take the four thousand. We'll take a loss. They don't want to lose the four thousand from workforce, so they accept you. They enroll you." four grand. I know. A lot of some schools will play ball with you. Others are greedy and they won't. But you find a school that'll accept the workforce four thousand, you go back to school and you uh, you graduate with flying colors, let's say, you, you got high grades and then guess what when you graduate? There's no jobs. Ah. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Go and uh, go into school now in this country today with the economy being the way it is, my sister Lisa, she, she told me it does not pay to spend money to go back to school in this day and age because there's nothing out there for you when you graduate. Whenever there is high unemployment, these schools come out from behind the walls. Commercials, late at night, tech schools, yeah, yeah. But what I learned there will never leave me. We didn't deserve to be poor any more than we deserve to be rich. Poverty is a circumstance, not a value judgment. I still have to remind myself sometimes that I was my harshest critic, that the judgment of the disadvantaged comes not just from conservative politicians and internet trolls. It came from me, even as I was living it. That's why we still have the Mercedes. I'm glad they do. This is probably why she did not defend herself, you know, against those people because she felt guilty. That's she correct. felt she felt herself. She, she had she been she had incorporated the brainwashing of the conservative idiots. Just like back what was it back in the 1980s during Reagan when when all the uh, disabled people felt guilty. The Republicans made disabled people feel, feel feel guilty that they were on the dole and they had to well, be, prove that they were independent and they can get a job and keep a job 
and they and and all this bullshit, uh, which was not entirely true. And by the way, when they got that job, they were no longer disabled. And they lost their. So money. any benefits they had or were receiving were gone, and that was the object of the bill to find an excuse to take away their social security disability. Do not believe the government when they tell you that your disability checks are safe if you get a part-time job as a disabled individual. It's a trick. It is a trick. Please believe me. I know from other people that I know personally it's a trick. But anyway, Thank you for joining us for a very special, in my opinion, uh, <clears throat> uncensored, hard-hitting truth show. Uh, I hope you like my my bright orange T-shirt with the, it has frogs on it. with the tree frogs on it. Yes, and uh, it, it is very summery. Actually, it's supposed don't to be they, my. Don't they make a noise? Or something like that. Tree frog. Frogs. Tree make, frog. I don't know what sounds tree, tree, tree frogs make. I, I know. It's some. I think it's a, some kind of whistle like that. I've heard it before. S some have like a, a, a chirpy, squeaky sound. Some have a, a big, bellowing, loud, obnoxious sound. Ribbit, ribbit, or brrr, you know, like the bullfrogs. Brrr, you know. <laughs> but I figure it was a good summer color. Plus, I'm a Leo, and my lucky color is orange. Uh, because it looks like the sun, I guess. Uh, my birthday is August 1st. Uh, but anyway, thank you for joining us for this week's show. We'll see you next time. And it's been a great one. And uh, that's it. See you next time. Say so long to these people. So long, people. This has been a Megalife 21 production.